iPhone 14 Pro Max versus the iPhone 12 Pro Max one year later. Now, the 12 Pro Max has been out for nearly three years next month, but I mean one year later and that I'm going to be talking about my thoughts about the upgrade to the 14 Pro Max after one year. Now, the first thing I noticed about these two phones and I actually miss from the iPhone 12 Pro Max is the lighter weight of it. Now, the iPhone 14 Pro Max is a quite heavy phone, and with bigger cameras, bigger battery, the phone just feels bulkier, heavier, and even more like a brick than ever before. Now, I never thought that the iPhone 12 Pro Max was the lightest phone on the block, but, you know, it was a little bit more comfortable with its lighter weight, and while it looks pretty much the same, besides the notch and a little bit smaller cameras, you know, the phone just felt a little more comfortable to hold, especially when you start adding a case. Especially when you start adding a case, the weight starts to come up on these phones. Now, from a design perspective, you have essentially the same uh, edges here. We do have stainless steel on both of them, flat edges. But you notice closely, if you look closely, that the iPhone 14 Pro Max is camera housing because while it is a better camera, it definitely added more bulk. Uh, my wife actually dropped the... Uh, iPhone 14 Pro, cracked the camera lenses. She said, you know, I don't even want to deal with this phone anymore. She went back to her iPhone 13. Um, so yeah, it's just a little something. Even with a, if you have a thin case, because these stick off the body of the phone, they can definitely crack. So be careful with that. I would get some good clearance between the case and the body. Now these were thinner, you know, smaller, but not quite as powerful as the current 14 Pro Max. I'll tell you a year later, Dynamic Island doesn't really, you know, I don't really love it. It still sticks in the way. It's pretty huge right there. And for some reason, I don't care how long I have this phone, this kind of just fades away a little bit more. I'm always looking at this Dynamic Island. It's just, I don't know, my eyes just drawn to it. And while I know Apple's not going to change their Dynamic Island in just one year's time, they usually keep these type of things around for a while. This, to me, was maybe slightly better just because I don't really look at it. At the same time, neither of these are my favorite option when it comes to that. I wish that they would just be full screen phones with maybe an under display camera or maybe they can try to find a way to get the camera in the bezel. That would be a little bit tough. But at the same time, you know, there wasn't a big design upgrade for me. Um, honestly, though, I do like the space black color. I think it's much nicer than the silver color. And I'm looking forward to see what they bring with the 15 Pro Max and the color options. But from a design perspective, one year later, it feels like the exact same phone. So if you're looking for something a little bit different, you know, you might want to stick it out and wait for the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Now, if you want something radically different, you probably want to even wait till the 16 models. But if you loved your 12 Pro Max and you just want better cameras, better brightness, better battery life, the 14 Pro Max is a decent upgrade if you're looking to get this thing used secondhand as the 15 Pro Max come out and people try to get rid of these. The display is basically the same as well. However, there is one major difference. The iPhone 14 Pro Max, you know, the 13 Pro Max introduced promotion. The 14 Pro Max has it as well. The iPhone 12 Pro Max has a 60 hertz panel. So the 12 Pro Max feels more like an iPhone 14 Plus, which kind of gives it a cheaper feel at this point in 2023. And a year later, I definitely don't want to go back to that as I do like the really smooth feel of the promotion on the iPhone 14 Pro Max. At the same time, the 12 Pro Max is a phone that never really lets you down. It's very reliable. The iPhone 14 Pro Max is definitely the smoother display. Now it also gets quite a bit brighter, but they definitely both have the same level of sharpness. So when you are looking at text, that's not gonna change really at all. It's just the smooth factor. And again, the dynamic island, which is useful for some people, depending on the application you're using. The display experience was not a major jump either for me a year later. I don't really think too much about it. I just think about when the 13 Pro Max brought promotion to me. So if you have a 12 Pro Max, long story short, and you're looking for a display upgrade, you know, it's it's a it's a upgrade since the 13 Pro Max because of promotion. But in terms of the actual day to day usage, it's not like you're getting a bigger screen. It's not like you're getting, you know, a totally different screen experience like a Z flip or a Z fold, something like that that folds. So really what you're getting is mostly a spec bump to the upcoming you know, 15 Pro Max, or if you go to this one right here. I will say though that the brightness is much easier to see outdoors on the iPhone 
14 Pro Max, which is a big upgrade if you're somebody who uses your phone in the sunlight a lot or you live in a state where you get sun a lot and basically you can never see your phone outside. That's definitely a big upgrade. They both have true tone night shift dark mode, so that's no difference either. And both of them can get very dim or very bright, but the average person is not going to really see too much of a difference when it comes to the brightness factor. Both of them have OLED, but I do find that my iPhone 12 Pro Max did have a little bit more of a cooler tone to the display, whereas the, or actually more of a warm tone, whereas the iPhone was closer, the 14 Pro Max was closer to a true white. So I think the calibration was also slightly better for the iPhone 14 Pro Max when it comes to the display. Now, when it comes to a software perspective, they both have the app library, both have widget support, both have iOS 16.6, both have the same apps. This is the same experience. We're done. You know, that's it. Here's the big deal, though. If you have a 14 Pro Max, you have a few years more of updates over iPhone 12 Pro Max. That's the major thing right there. However, I think some of these, you know, 12 Pro Max, 13 Pro Max, I wouldn't be surprised if some of these get longer updates than you might be expecting just because the phone's got more powerful over time. So maybe they'll get a little bit more update. We'll have to see how it goes. They might stretch a couple of these with these more powerful A-series chips a little bit longer. We'll have to see how it goes. But I will tell you that you're just going to get more updates for the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Other than that, there's a difference in the camera department. You have a couple of more settings in here. You can go three times versus 2.5. You have an action mode in the video over here for the iPhone 14 Pro Max. There's a cinematic camera. There's not one here. The majority of the changes in software are simply in the camera. Now, from a performance perspective, we've already done a speed test on these, not lately. We haven't done one on the 16.6, but the average consumer day to day is not really going to see a massive difference in the performance, except for, you know, maybe some load times in the gaming, maybe a little bit better sustained performance in gaming. And graphically, the iPhone 14 Pro Max is going to be a little bit better, but it's not like the 12 Pro Max can't play basically everything. And it's not so much faster on a 14 Pro Max that it actually makes a big difference in a day-to-day -day life for you. So if I go to Geekbench 6 over here, you're gonna see Geekbench 6 shows an A16 at 3.4 gigahertz clock speed. Over here, iPhone 12 Pro Max, an A14 at 2.99 gigahertz. So it's clocked a little bit lower, which means the CPU is not quite as powerful to use. Um, we have a little bit less RAM um, on neither. They're both six gigs of RAM, so keep that in mind. That's about the same. The A15 was a nice jump from the A14. The A16 was a barely a jump. So overall, was the performance so much better for me? And the answer is yeah, a little bit. It's mostly because of the ProMotion, but the iPhone 14 Pro Max does feel like it flies around the operating system a little bit faster than back in the day. But at this point, it's gotten to the, the fact to where it's so fast, that it doesn't really matter. It's, it's not a life-changing experience. Like it hasn't helped me at all you know, be faster in my, you know, workflow hasn't made me, you know, be any faster in my day-to-day -day life. So does it really matter? No, not really. Is it a luxury to have 120 Hertz to have ProMotion dynamic display to have that little bit of a snappier experience and never really have to think about performance? Yes, it is, but it's not life changing. But a year later, you know, if you're looking for more performance, it'll probably help you down the line when it comes to getting updates. Bigger change though has been the battery life. Now I will say that the battery life has been better for the iPhone 14 Pro Max. It's a bigger capacity. It's more optimized you know, CPU for later updates that we're in right now. So overall, yes, the iPhone 14 Pro Max definitely has the better battery life. Even though a lot of people like to complain in other reviews about how bad the battery life is, I never ended my day as an actual user of this phone almost a full year now. I never once had this phone drain all the way down, not one time. So it gets through the day. I don't care what anybody says for a regular user like myself and like you. But at the same time, any phone, if you push any phone really hardcore besides some of those ridiculously thick, you know, rugged phones that have like 15,000 milliamp hour batteries, if you push any major flagship a lot using it heavy, you're going to you're going to destroy that battery life. Do I want to see better battery life? Of course, I want to see better battery life on the upcoming models that are going to cost more money, of course. But at the same time, if a year later, comparing it to my 12 Pro Max, the 12 Pro Max, 
definitely left me with less battery life, about 20% less at the end of the day. Neither would actually drain fully, but I was a little bit more concerned with the 12 Pro Max. So if you're looking to do a jump here, maybe later this uh, year when the prices come down on the iPhone 12 Pro Max, the 14 Pro Max drops, if you're looking to do that jump, you will get a major jump in battery life. Now the cameras. Now the cameras on a technical standpoint are definitely better. Noise is reduced over the iPhone 12 Pro Max. You have a macro mode now, which is major. More zooming on this phone versus the iPhone 12 Pro Max. The ability to have an action mode, which basically turns this thing into a GoPro. There are substantial improvements here to those of you who are really taking advantage of the features that is provided to you within the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Also, if you know what you're doing and you know how to really, you, you wanna use this thing more professionally, um, not everybody is, but if you are, it's there. But if you don't even care about that, you just want simply better results, the iPhone 14 Pro Max definitely has provided me better results. But I kind of feel the same way after a year that I felt about the way of the performance. And that is that the iPhone 12 Pro Max, <laughs> it's still an amazing camera. It can still do pretty much everything. I do notice when I punch in on the zoom, there's a little more noise. I do notice in video that the iPhone 14 Pro Max is a little bit better blurring in the background. It has a little bit better quality, but at the end of the day, I don't think this phone was bad at all. It was a really good camera. And you still had the portrait modes, which have gotten better as well on a newer phone. The processing makes the images turn out a little bit better. And there's no dedicated macro mode, although you can take it to the wide angle right here, get pretty close and take your own macro shot anyway. Front facing cameras didn't really change much either. So if we go over to the video, pretty decent. And then over here on the video, a little bit sharper, a little bit better, but not, not drastically so. So the cameras to me are definitely better for those of you who are serious into your camera. If you are not serious into your camera, a year later, it's just another one of those things like the performance. Not life-changing, but definitely big time if you are into using the features that are provided to you. You gotta have, you gotta use them. If you don't, then what's the point? And lastly, there was a slight improvement to audio. The phone was a little bit louder on the iPhone 14 Pro Max for sure. Um, about a decibel louder, which is, Slightly noticeable, maybe to some people, to some people's ears, not really. 5G on both. Both of them had decent signal strength, no problems there. So that's not a big issue. At the end of the day, how big of a jump did this feel after a year of using these, thinking about the jump, the upgrade here from 12 Pro Max to 14 Pro Max? And I got to tell you, I would say an overall upgrade, if I was to put it on a percentage scale, this has been about a 25% jump to me. Uh, it hasn't been no 50% jump. Some people might look at it differently, but you know, I think a lot of people, the value that is provided by both of these phones, I think it's only about a 25% jump. It's a little bit better in the cameras, a little bit better in, in the display. It's a little bit better in the battery life, but it's not a massive, it wasn't a massive, massive change that really, you know, took my experience of iPhone to the next level. So I'm really excited to see where they take iPhone 15 Pro Max, and if it jumps bigger over to 12 Pro Max, but if you're looking to cop a 14 Pro Max, use the wait till after the event, you'll be able to get a good deal on these, and they're still excellent phones. At the end of the day, both of them are excellent iPhones. Let me know your thoughts on them down below in the comments section. Comment which phone you have right now, which one you plan to get. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Nick here. Be sure to be well, and peace.